But first, we got to talk about the the USB C iPhone confirmation. I guess is what we could say. Yeah, I want to open this up by when I first saw the news article. Uh, I see it in my head. I'm thinking of writing the podcast for this week, and I just skip it because I'm like, we should talk about this on the podcast. No, because if I bring it up, Marquez is going to say it's not going to happen. I've heard this a million times. It's not even <laughs> worth talking about. And I thought he's right. And then I saw it all over Twitter, and it seems a little more. Yeah, this is this is different because this time it came from an active Apple executive who says, "Yeah, we're going to have to comply." Mm-hmm. Like, so just to fill in what the story is, so the obvi- obviously the iPhone has been Lightning for years and years, and we've always thought about what if there was a USB C iPhone, what if it was better than Lightning, but it's never happened, and it's been increasingly more and more likely that they'll go like portless and just avoid USB C altogether. But lately. There has been some legislation drumming up in the EU that would require standardization of all phones to use USB Type-C. And of course, the iPhone is sold in Europe, so that would mean that they need to sell a USB-C iPhone in Europe, and then the dominoes start falling, and you're like, well, I guess you just make a USB-C iPhone now. Uh, That's just been what's burbling up, and like we hear that they'll standardize by a certain year, and we hear that this is coming up soon, and we've never heard anything from Apple about it because why would they ever confirm anything like that happening to them but uh we both have a confirmation that this rule is going into place and we now have joanna stern on stage asking two apple executives about the ruling and getting a response which included the words will comply yeah that's why i wanted to put confirm in quotation marks there's still like this little bit of hesitancy but i think we decided it's only like two minutes of their response yeah let's play um so let's play it and we'll pause it a couple times and say a a few thoughts we have on. have thoughts for sure the eu has approved legislation to create a common charger in fact they said in a press release yesterday in 2024 a usb-c port will become mandatory for a whole range of electronic devices such as mobile phones tablets and headphones i think that includes you guys is apple moving to usb-c well maybe i can step back a little bit <laughs> you may uh, just stop right there if that's the like if that's already the start and we know it's apple you know this is going to be the most pr response of course possible of also course. Is there an airplane playing in that? Because like we're near an airport, and I thought that was playing here, but I think they might also be another place that has can't stop the show. Can't, can't stop the stop show. It, Just gotta yeah. keep it rolling. Also, but worth keeping in mind, we're talking about the iPhone because that's the interesting one. But also, Apple makes a USB uh, a Lightning mouse, the Magic Mouse. They make a Lightning headphone, which would be all AirPods cases and mm-hmm. the AirPods Max. And they make the first gen iPad, which is Lightning. They sell a bunch I mean, of other Lightning Magic accessories. Magic Keyboard is it? Uh, keyboard also? is Lightning. Trackpad is Lightning. So all of that is looped in. I don't know exactly how the law is written yet, mm-hmm. but it's it's interesting. Joanna loops that stuff in. But let's hear their answer for the iPhone. You probably heard me say for years that I, I don't mind governments telling us what they want to accomplish, but usually we've got some pretty smart engineers to figure out the best ways to accomplish them technically. And an example of that that I love to give is for years and years, mobile phones had to satisfy a hearing aid compatibility spec, very prescriptively described by you know, regulation that said, here's what you have to do to, to be compatible with hearing aids. The problem is it didn't work, but all of us had to do it. I don't know what that means. And so <laughs> we came up with a new way of doing you hearing, aid, hearing aids. Let me tell you about hearing aids. Uh, hearing aids. I see where it's coming from. Standard. That actually worked. You know, so what we were accomplishing is what the government wanted, was is to help have hearing impaired people be able to use phones. But we did it in a way that worked better. And, you know, we've been in an argument over this one for well over 10 years. And over 10 years ago, the push from the EU, look, they're well-meaning. I get, you know, I get the fact that they want to accomplish some good things. Oh. Was to do micro USB. Okay. And standardize as a micro USB. If we have standardized a micro USB, that chart doesn't exist, right? Neither of those happen. And so we have been in this little bit of a disagreement. And but part of what, of course, they wanted to accomplish is why should people have all these different power adapters? So we got to what we think was a better place, right? Which is power adapters that had detachable cables, mm-hmm. you know 
all of them USB A or USB C, uh, and largely moving in USB C. But you choose the cable, you know, that was appropriate for your device, uh, whether that's one of ours or somebody else's. And what uh, that allowed you to do is have over a billion people. It's not a small number of people that have that connector on the left, right, to be able to use what they have already and not have to um, be disrupted mm -hmm. by that and cause a bunch of e-waste as well. I mean, because what are you going to do with these cables over time? <laughs> oh, yeah. They're no longer useful. Yeah. Again, billions of them, right, because everybody has more than one cable. And so we preferred that path. Uh, governments you know, get to do what they're going to do. And obviously, we'll have to comply. We have no choice, as, as we do around the world, to comply to uh, local laws. But, you know, we think it, the approach would have been better environmentally and better for our customers to, to not have a government be that prescriptive. Okay. <sighs> yeah, where to start? I feel like it, like, starts off slow, and then all of a sudden, he's like, boom, boom, boom. And you're like, uh, a whole my, lot of it. My hot take is I agree with everything he said until the very end. Which, which is but better for our customers. I also disagree so, with better for our environment. I agree. I agree actually with everything he's saying about the way that it's being prescribed, except lightning kind of sucks now. <laughs> so it's like, yes, moving to USB-C is the right thing and it's what we wanted. And of course it's going to be better for everyone because USB-C is great. Uh, but the way they're doing it, which is basically the way he described like, the government wanted to standardize micro USB a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And that would have been great in the time where everything else was micro USB, but then we wouldn't have gotten any innovation to get better, which is how we got USB type C. So when we went from Apple had like 30 pin and then they moved to lightning, if they'd standardized uh, micro USB back in the day, we never would have gotten lightning and we never would have gotten USB C. Right. So you have the I like the idea of what he's saying, which is the government should have more of like an end result that is ideal, which is less e-waste and better experience for customers. And then let the engineers and the smart people who work for the companies decide how to get to that result and satisfy some checkboxes rather than the government going, here's the piece of tech you have to use. That's that's the actual problem that we have with this this weird ruling. The end result is going to be getting a USB-C iPhone, which is a good end result, but the way we're getting there sets the precedent for like, well, what if something better comes along? We just standardized and mandated USB Type-C. That's I kinda get, weird. I guess like, f f oh man, y you guys are both throwing a million things out and we're gonna, uh, uh, um, yeah. so like, I can't, there's an, we don't know what the official law is in terms of like we're standardizing USB C. When are we allowed to upgrade? Do we know like a x x amount of years that this is? Because like I can't imagine it's going to be some sort of law where it's like USB C forever. And right. in terms of like saying oh well we we could have tried to mandate micro USB but we never would have taken the next steps forward. Like micro USB took a step forward, thirty pin took a step forward. They both did take steps forward into to new, better cables. And in the sense, I just didn't love what he was saying of like, well, we would have been stuck with micro USB. Well, you were 30 pin and then you went to lightning. Like you still made the change. You still made a bunch of people have to change their their cables. Oh, yeah. And then I still have an issue with how he says that of like, well, why are we gonna make all these people change their cables when Apple itself doesn't even use the same cables across their landscape. We just got an iPad that has the dumbest dongle I've ever Across. seen in my life. Yeah. And Apple loves selling dongles. Like this almost feels like, oh hey, we're gonna go to USB C and enjoy our fifteen dollar dongle that, you know, we have to because the government made us do it. I'm surprised they're not like hopping on this to to increase their dongle well, sales. Okay, but. here's the other thing about lightning is it makes Apple a lot of money. Which is the the made for iPhone program, the My, MiFi, made for iPhone, M I F I, made for iPhone. Mm -hmm. You have to get it certified. Apple gets a little bit of a cut every time you sell a Lightning certified accessory. A little bit of that goes to Apple. It's not a zero amount of money. It's yeah. a, it's a real no, thing. No, it's a ton of money. Um, and they give up a little bit of that control over how things interface with the iPhone by being required to switch to a different controller. I'm sure Apple would love to go give us a set of requirements to hit. And we will make our next generation connector hit that, but it won't necessarily be USB Type C. So if you if you mandate, so I, I pulled up the thing, which is like, okay, uh, 
USB Type-C must be a common charger for all phones and electronic devices in an effort to reduce e-waste and inconvenience with incompatible chargers. Under the new rules, consumers will no longer need a different charging device and cable every time they purchase a new device and can use one single charger for all of their small and medium-sized portable electronic devices, including laptops. I mean... So that would be fine if you just gave us that rule and said, now all of your devices must have the same charger, period. Okay, they could all be USB-C or they could all be something new that we're working on. And if others have other accessories, they can't be micro USB, they can't be some of them lightning, some of them USB-C, whatever. They should all be the same so you could use one charger for them all. And that's a great goal. I love that. I love having one charger for everything. But to decide that it's USB-C now means that they'll be able to decide what it is in the future and just say whenever you move on, like it's 2024 for mobile phones, tablets, e-readers, earbuds, digital cameras, headphones, headsets, handheld video game consoles, and portable speakers, and then 40 months total for laptops. I understand the sentiment that you're saying in that like, X amount of government control and deciding this could potentially stunt technological growth, but it's hard to argue it for Apple when they're using two different types of chargers, which is like what you said, but like in terms of e-waste, they are producing e-waste because of having two different types of chargers where you can't universally even use the same charger within the Apple ecosystem. The and thing then, though, I, iPhone and iPhone accessories typically all charge via, via lightning. Yeah. So like AirPods, so you use your, your iPhone lightning charger to charge the, the iPhone and to charge AirPods and to charge whatever other made for iPhone stuff that you have. And the fact that Apple also makes other things that charge with USB Type-C then makes it muddy. Because then yeah, you I, th I think the chargers. fact that they have other type, like I would argue the majority of people, if they have an iPhone, also have something that charges via USB-C. Everything else. So Yeah, everything else that they own that's not an iPhone or iPhone accessory. And then like laptop, iPad, just regular school laptop that's not Apple. I mean, Bluetooth speaker. Like there are a million other things that they could have that have USB-C. And I think, and I don't know, like I know nothing about politics or gover governing or anything like that, but this seems like an easier thing to implement when you can prove that the company that has to make the biggest change already is using this type of connector that you're forcing them yeah, to Apple use. Yeah, was like first in line to do like USB-C for laptops and stuff. So they like, they, it makes a lot of sense, I think. I also don't just love how they're talking about environmental aspects when I think a lot of the stuff that they do feels fairly anti-environment in some senses, including right now the dongle that you have to have to charge a Gen 1 Apple Pencil yeah, that's on an iPad that now comes in a new box that doesn't even come in the box with the iPad. Yeah. It's just harder to take it at face value. Yeah, exactly. So I, I agree with, uh, with the the path that he took to explaining why he doesn't like this, it, the judgment, but hey, we're going to get a USB-C iPhone now, it sounds like. Well, okay. And then the last thing we have to talk about is he did not say 100% we are getting USB-C iPhone. He said we will comply. Uh, so there are some people out there who think that might not. Okay, so there's I'm several. I'm pretty sure it means USB-C iPhone. There's several ways of complying. This is why I think I might want to make a video explaining this. One is they could make all of the 2024 iPhones light USB-C. Mm -hmm. Or they could make just the iPhones sold in Europe USB Type-C, mm -hmm. technically, and then all the rest would be lightning. That would be weird. I don't see them doing that. I don't either. They could, and it's also AirPods and all these other things. Or they could not sell any of their lightning accessories in Europe. I, I don't think they would do uh, that either. I don't think they would do that either. I think that they would only be able to sell their USB-C things in Europe. I think the phone would still have to go USB-C, though, because it comes with the charger, and that's They just wouldn't wrong. sell the phone in Europe. Oh, not sell the phone Not sell all. the iPhone in okay, Europe. Okay, that's not Yeah, happening. I was going to say, that's yeah, probably yeah. not happening. Um, and so, yeah, I think the most likely thing is their, their next, um, the 2024 iPhone will be USB-C for everyone. Do you think port... So some people are thinking a portless iPhone would can be considered compliant. This is interesting. I'm not sure if I agree with that or not. So right now you can get a USB-C MagSafe charger, right? So mm -hmm. if you have a USB-C brick, USB-C to the MagSafe puck, charges on the back of the phone, so you don't need to charge via that port. And we did talk about this a while ago, which is like Apple does seem to be aiming to get rid of those outside 
intrusions, including the port. Yeah. So what if they just go middle finger to both of you, no ports for you, and we just get rid of the port entirely, and is that technically complying? I guess so, technically. But yeah. can they really go? Mag, MagSafe is not that good. Will it be that good by 2024? It's one of those things that I bring up because I saw people saying, and then I say it out loud, and I'm like, I don't think that's it. I don't think it's going to be that no. good by 2024. Hey, thanks for watching this clip. I just wanted to let you know that this would be a great time to test YouTube's beautiful new subscribe button. It's down below. You just got to make sure it's like in the same spot you thought it was. It's pretty, it's close. It's pretty close. It's a little different color. It's a different color. Yeah. And if you click it, this amazing thing happens where it changes colors. Oh, that new animation. Yeah. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, like it's like it changes. Yeah. To, it, I think it says subscribed instead of subscribed. No, no, no. Oh. It goes away and then it shows like a join button if the channel. Oh, and joined. you're stuck forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you're subscribed for life. Stick with us forever. It's pretty sick. It is. You should join too. <laughs>